Well, good afternoon. It's Inauguration Day in Minnesota, and any moment now, Governor Tim Walz and Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan will take their oaths of office for their second term. Thanks for joining us for your midday update. Everyone being sworn in today won their re-election back in November. There's Attorney General Keith Ellison, Secretary of State Stephen Simon, and State Auditor Julie Blaha. Starting tomorrow, Minnesota lawmakers are going to go back to work for a new legislative session. It's going to be the first time in nearly a decade that Democrats will have full control of the House and the Senate. University of Minnesota political science professor Larry Jacobs says some priorities from that party will be spending on education and housing, expanding abortion protections and tax cuts. You know the state has a projected $17.6 billion budget surplus, but it's mostly one-time money, and the governor has proposed using some of that cash to give back to you, Minnesotans, through tax rebate checks. I do think we're going to see some fireworks at the Capitol. The progressive part of the DFL is mostly in the House. The Senate, uh, it's a little more mixed. Uh, there's only a one-seat Democratic majority. And that rests on some members who are elected in very close races and from greater Minnesota. So they tend to be a little more moderate, a little more conservative. Brief makeup of who's in those chambers. Larry Jacobs says that may make things harder to pass that the progressives want, like issues around gun control and recreational marijuana. Well, with the new year comes a bump in the minimum wage in 23 states, including Minnesota. Statewide, it's up to 1059 if you work at a company with a half a million dollars in annual revenue. In Minneapolis and St. Paul, the minimum wage is going up as well to just over $15 for larger businesses. Well, CARE's weather team is calling tomorrow a weather worn day because a big storm is a coming. Here's what to expect. Heavy snow, ice, freezing rain, all predicted to move into the metro and cause issues. Big ones in southern and western Minnesota. MnDOT is asking you to plan ahead. Give yourself plenty of travel time. Check road conditions often as they can change by the hour. And with that triple threat kind of forecast, Ben can mm -hmm. fill you in how quickly those can change and when they might start. Hey, Ben. Hi, Jana. Yeah, we have deemed Tuesday a weather worn day with this impending snowstorm, which is going to give us a combination of a wintry mix, some freezing rain, and yes, some heavy accumulating snow. And snow totals are going to vary widely depending on where you live across the state. Let's take a live look at radar right now. You can see it's in its development stages as snow starts to move over South Dakota and just starting to push into southwestern Minnesota. That band the snow is going to arc its way northward. Heaviest snow expected in those uh, pink counties. That's a winter storm warning. But ice is a major concern over south central Minnesota, including cities like Mankato, Jackson, Blue Earth, and Rochester. They could see a half an inch of ice. And here's how much snow we're expecting within the metro, about four to eight inches. And most of that falling mid to late morning Tuesday and then lingering through Wednesday. You can see higher totals further south and west. Parts of southwestern Minnesota could be looking at a foot or more of snow. And not to mention if we start off seeing a wintry mix or some icing that could create some hazardous conditions on area roads. Here's your seven day forecast. Probably won't see stuff flying here until later on this evening and overnight. Snow really begins to ramp up again later in the morning through the lunch hour time frame on Tuesday and snow showers lingering through Wednesday. So snow might not be entirely done until we wrap up our day on Wednesday. It gets colder later in the week, but nothing brutally cold. We're still going to reach into the 20s for highs. Coldest day expected on Friday with some partial sunshine and just flurries later in the week with a gradual warming trend. Temperatures for the most part, Janet, will be staying above average throughout the duration of this event. All right. Well, tomorrow's a day where people are going to want to stay tuned by the hour That's for right. sure. Thanks, Ben. And a way to do that is to download the CARE 11 weather app. You can get personalized forecasts, weather alerts, and you can check the live radar anytime. It's free in all of the app stores. Well, the start of a new year brings a lot of new promises. They're known as resolutions. We're going to go over how goals have been changing throughout the years and tips to make the right resolutions this time around. That's tonight at 630 on Breaking the News. That's all of your news and weather headlines for now. We'll be back in a half hour.